This is what you're going to eat. You're going to eat fruit and herbs. To every beast, you wouldn't eat, eat meat in the beginning. But after the fall, something happened where we had to have meat, certain amino acids. You, you don't, you go insane. And to every <coughs> beast, <coughs> and every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, when there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was up. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Man was created on the sixth day. When you get six, six, six. Three is the number of divine manifestation. Six is the number of man. Man created on the sixth day. Man trying to play God or man elevating demonism to a God-like step. So the six, six, six. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. This is chapter 2, Genesis. Thus the heavens and the earth was finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work on which he made, and he rested on the seventh day, and from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Now the seventh day is Sabbath. God ordained the Sabbath. In the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament now. We're not under the Old Testament. For those Sabbath years out there. The Bible said, live a life of faith, you are keeping the Sabbath. But anyway, on the on the seventh day, they know the scientists, uh, let's get back around the scientists, physiologists, that always the heart beats at a slower rate than it does the rest of the week. So I throw that in for free. God's laws. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that is in it he had rested from all his work from what God had created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field which it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain. See? No rain. It was like a giant greenhouse. See, the whole earth was different than it is now. One giant land mass, like a huge, huge continent. Africa, Brazil. North America, South America, Antarctica, um, North America, South America, everything was together. Europe, Asia, all one giant landmass. Everything was one giant continent. There was no seven continents. Everything was one huge landmass. Like I said, continental drift, you study it, the plates of the earth and the shifting of the earth. One of you, God said, was right. It's all water, one giant landmass. Everything drifted after the flood. To where you got it now, everything spread out. You have to put it together, one huge puzzle, it would all fit. They already done done it on a, on a computer. with a hole missing where Atlantis was sunk. A huge land mass was, was a, which was Atlantis. And they sunk in the Atlantic Ocean. And God wiped them out during the flood. In every, oh, okay, verse 6. But there went out a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed men out of the dust of the ground 
and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now that was God's phenomenal tree. And he didn't mind you eat the tree of life. You should live forever and ever. But not that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what's that God could draw a line in the sand and it establishes his Godship. This line you better not cross. This is mine. It's good to establish that with your kids. I deal with mine when I was raising my kids. That's daddy's chair. They're not sitting there. You get them ready for God. You prepare them, your kids. You better not do this. You better not go there. That's my spot. You, know, this is, you let them know. So you get them ready for God. Raise them in the way of the Lord. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Don't spare the rod. That either. Give a teaching of badass kids. You want God to end up dealing with your kids. If you don't. Anyway. God's order. God's laws. God draws a line in the sand. And I'm sure that tree of knowledge of good evil is the most beautiful, gigantic, most well fragranced, with the most delicious fruit of all the trees in the garden. God is called a temptation. <laughs> And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became in the foreheads. My science is proven that. Using satellites. God said four rivers. The name of the first was is Pison. That is which is compassed with the whole land of Havilah. Where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's there is bedlam and onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gien. The same is that that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third, I believe Gien is the Tigris River. And the name of the third river is Heliakia, which goeth toward the east out of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden, where God placed him. That's God's box. Eden was God's box. Now Eden was the heart of God. And he's the heart of God. It's where God had his R and R, where he had pleasure. Eat. Guard then. Guard eating. Guard eating. The guard eating. It's the bad job. And Lord God took man and put him in the box of Eden. <laughs> Excuse me. And the Lord God took me and put him in the garden of Eden, sorry about that, to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. God's law has been spoken. And this is prophetic too. God's prophetic law. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You shall surely die. Because I said so. 
Now there was life all around him. He didn't know what death was. No such thing as death. Nothing died. It's like heaven. People that have witnessed and been to heaven, there's no death in heaven. But leaf fall off and just sprouts again into another plant and vice versa and go on and on. There's no death. Nothing rots, that and die. To show you what God said. So they didn't know nothing about death. Man was created to live forever. Created eternal. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should live alone. Now you understand, you caught up with me, right? Remember back earlier, he created man and woman together. They were equal. And that's a big time goal, time span. Man was alone. Adam was alone. Lonely Adam. The lonely divorced Adam. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And it's time to start over and we can give Adam another wife. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. God made them like he would make clay, a clay animal. Took him and made a bird and became a and came to became alive. Whatever he made, he formed out the ground and that what it became. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, everything made from the earth. And brought it to them. And brought it to them unto Adam. Now where's he getting them from? It's only Adam. God is seeing the God had already prophetically spoke of a new woman into existence. Even though she's not physically there. But that's God's word. That's his prophetic word. He's declaring what he is anyway. The, the woman is in Adam. And we're about to see that in a minute. And brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called them, the living creature, that was the name thereof. I told you. Now this took a lot of time. To name all the species of everything on earth. Everything has retained its name, like I said. Adam named it. You look at anything in creation, you're a dog, or a, or a specific type of dog. You're a wolf hound. Oh! <laughs> and that species can interbreed with that species. It's seed within itself. You got small dogs, big dogs, you got hunting dogs. You got house pets. You got bloodhounds. Everyone got their own purpose. Dog bred with a function. Sheep dog. The wolf hound, like I said, you track wolves. God did this. You got an Adam name. He named each animal. Gave each family, you're a polar bear. You're a brown bear. You're a Kodiak bear. You're going on. Name the creeping things. You're a you're King Cobra. You're a black mama. You're a rattlesnake. You're a python. You're an anaconda. That's a lot of time. I'm just mind boggled at the time it took the name everything. I know this man was lonely and he was sick of animals. And he wanted a wife. 
And that, and that also gave names to the, and that gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air. All oh, birds, just birds. I love birds. I can't imagine naming every single bird. You're an eagle bird. And you're a condor bird. You're a red-tailed hawk bird. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you be your falcon? You're a you're a dove. We could go on and on. And the, all the individual species within the bird. All the species of birds and all the individual names within that species of the birds to single them out. That's a lot of time. Just for the bird species. Birds, there's thousands of bird species, believe, around the world. From little hummingbirds to woodpeckers to, <laughs> I'm just thinking, just off the cuff, I mean, birds. <laughs> Then we ain't gonna get into the tropical birds. The parakeets and the parrots. And I mean, you can go on and on and on with these bird cockatoos. This is mind boggling. My animals wore out by animals. I sure he would. Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an ill meat for him. <laughs> I told you. See, the man was lonely. He's like, have you seen all these, everybody's, you seen all the animals get their groove on and reproducing and having a bond. And here he is, naming everything, and he's alone. And the thing got mates, or made him. In whatever form they made him. Everyone got a companion. And this man been alone. I mean, I'm sure, you know, the anger of the divorce. He's like, all right, I don't need a woman for a long time. That was such a uh, bitter break up with him to live. It's understandable, I understand. But then again, time went on with all these animals. Like I said, this 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 had to be a long time. I could camp here. <laughs> this, people just read the Bible, trip over things, keep moving, not be. I have always been that way. I have to stop and, and deeply analyze the new critical thinking here. How long it took him to name all these creatures by himself. He's alone. And he's created eternal. Man was created to live there. So a day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years a day. How many? Thousands of years that they take him to name everything. I'll read back up and read this verse again. And to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. God put him under. God's a spiritual amnesia. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> God put him on it. And a anesthesia. And close up the flesh. And, and closed up the flesh. Oh, excuse me. And he took one of his ribs. So God going to create him a woman from his body. God opened him up, performed open rib surgery, took a rib, and closed up the flesh instead there. So this is more personal than God creating a woman, creating him, Adam, and then creating a woman. So both of them was created. It wasn't that personal thing there going. Was, she was created, he was created. 
male and female. But this time, God made it more personal. He took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of Brother Jay, do you believe that? Absolutely. I absolutely believe that. 100%. God said it. They did a study in Russia with the uh, rabbits, long hair male rabbits mating with short hair female rabbits. And over time, the short hair female rabbit grew hair and became one with those long hair rabbits. Then they did the reverse. Breed, uh, breed, bred short hair male rabbits with long hair female rabbits. And the female rabbit lost her hair and became short hair rabbit like her male counterpart. God said one. Yeah, so this is proving that. That rib definitely proves that. That mystical rib God took and made him woe man out of it. I believe it. Well, I doubt. And the rib which the Lord God had taken, this is verse, 20, uh, verse 22, 222. 222. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woe man. Woe man. And brought her unto the man. <laughs> How you like this model? <laughs> God showing off. This is you, man, from your body here. It's part of you. Which makes more sense. Do I got do I Adam said, no, nah, not this time. No, no, I went through uh, eons here with no nobody in my life. And this is personal here. This is flesh and my flesh. And, it, and the rib which the Lord go back to 22 and take it from man made he woe man and brought her unto man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh now that's the mystical union of marriage you should be one like I said they've proven that with the rats man and woman get married Stay together for a while, and they become one. People start saying, "Oh, they even look alike." Have kids, all that. God said it. I've seen couples been together for years. I mean, talking married couples for years. They look like brother and sister. God said they should become one. And Adam said, this is now, verse 23, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she should be called woe man, because she was taken out of man. So Adam named the woe man, woe man. Named everything including the woe man. Adam did. Verse 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. God ordained marriage, man and woman. God ordained marriage. Now Satan perverted it to everything else. Now Satan is the pervert, perverted nature. That's where I get my teaching. Adam and Eve, nature versus the serpent. But God made man and woman. Therefore shall a man leave his, this is marriage, leave his father and his mother, get out the house, and shall cleave unto his wife. God ordained marriage. Man and woman. And they shall be one flesh. That's what God intended. Us to marry and stay married for life. And become one. Like I said, Adam was divorced. A lot of divorced people in the Bible, including God himself. 
Jesus, we can go to see Israel. Both divorced the house of Judah and the house of Israel. <laughs> God was divorced too. Moses was divorced. You go and I'm divorced. But that doesn't change God's law, God's ways, what he intended for me. And they were both naked, the man and his wife. It's the nudist camp. It was that uh, garden of Eden. And were not ashamed. There's no such thing as being ashamed. It's natural to walk around but naked in the garden of Eden. What's there to be ashamed of? You clothe with God's righteousness as long as you stay in your box and obey. The man hadn't fallen, hadn't seen him. He was innocent. It's like a baby's not ashamed to be naked when it's born. Come out with your birthday suit. He was wearing a birthday suit. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. This is very complicated theological water that we trail here. There's been a lot of debate over this serpent, what the serpent was. Obviously, the Bible tells you, if you pay close attention, we've got to read what the serpent is. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field. It was a beast. The Bible's telling you what it is. That's what people try to complicate simple things of the scripture. First law, the first law of the scripture is to believe what it said it is. People try to ne put metaphors and super spiritualize everything, cloak everything in the, the parables and parodies and this and that and symbols. No. It's a beast. The serpent was a beast before he fell. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He's a, some kind of beast of the field. And he said unto the woman, Yea, if God said ye shall not, now Satan, animals, you did follow street priest ministry, I've heard me use this analogy before. Animals have a will too. And you find that out that when you're dealing with Jesus conducted the exorcism on the uh, demoniac of the gathering. And he asked the demons, that he was, where do y'all want to go? They said the pigs. The pigs didn't want the demons in them. The pigs committed suicide. They ran off the escarpment and off the cliff and, and drowned themselves. They didn't want no demons in them. So they had free will. Demons are disembodied spirits looking for a body to possess. They were disembodied during the flood out. Spirits of the devil and those spirits of the, job, of the uh, fallen angels and women cohabitate. That we were to read about if we were to keep reading in Genesis 6 6. In Genesis 6. But anyway, this. This animal, this beast, allowed Satan to possess it. And obviously this was a beautiful creature. Now the woman should have been sitting there by herself anywhere, sitting there by herself, focused on this tree. Obviously she'd been doing this for a while. And Adam should have had his wife up under him. Up under him. And she had wandered off, and she's sitting here staring at this uh, tree, already contemplating how 
good food for taste. Already lusting for this tree. Satan just pushed her over the, over the cliff. She was already away from her husband, sitting there. So here we go again. Another female rebellion <laughs> in the progress. He had one little. That was the first wife. Now remember the title of this, in case you lost track. The vocabulary of doubt has God said. Now the Back to the first three, now the, uh, three one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said? That's how Satan comes. The soul seed of doubt into what God said. The vocabulary of doubt. To get to undermine God's word. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, You may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. That's a lie. God never said that. He never said nothing about, see how she made God more... His rules more strenuous than they were. He just said, don't eat. He said nothing about touch. So she's already in line with the serpent. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See how crafty Satan is? He's countering what God has said. You shall not surely die. God said, you should surely die. She should have said, no, God said, you should surely die. I'm not eating that tree. I'm not eating this tree. But she was already lusting for the tree anyway. That's what I said. Satan just pushed.